Hey everyone, this is Ash, and uh, I'm doing a comic haul video. Uh, it's Wednesday, it's new comic book day. Uh, it's gonna be a quick one. Uh, it's not really an Ash Wednesday thing. Uh, I got some comics, I like to show them off. Some people like to see this stuff. I like those kind of videos. Um, so I make them. Also, I like to get food with my comics. Um, this is kind of late in the day, this is my dinner. Made a habit or a tradition of getting in and out burger, but I've had in and out like three times this week. And uh, and then I went to another local beef, not beef, it's another local hamburger place. It's called Beef and Bun. So I've had a lot of that and I was really jonesing for some Mexican food. So I went to my favorite Mexican taco shop, Sombrero. Uh, Mexican food, Sombrero's. It, it's good. I love Sombrero. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm unboxing Mexican food on a comics channel because that's how we roll in San Diego. Um, so sorry for the weird, if it got a lot of static from the bag. I don't know how that's going to pick up on the camera, but um, whatever. I don't know. I'm going to have to wipe this counter down afterwards because I feel some moisture underneath that. Um, all right. So one of the traditions of taco shops is hot carrots. Uh, you have to get them pre-bagged now because of the stupid pandemic and everyone's afraid uh, of catching the bug. Uh, but normally in, you'd go and what is, you'd have a salsa bar and then a big old thing of carrots. You just divvy them up, you know, up yourself. Uh, this is a staple. This is like the French fries of Mexican food. Love hot carrots. Get you some salsa. Another thing you could serve yourself, but now you have to have it pre-made. Every burrito you get comes with a bag of chips homemade chips and uh, this is the special thing it's called the special burrito uh, if you ever go if you're ever in San Diego and you swing by a sombrero get you one of these this is the also known as the jumbo deluxe special burrito that's what it is it's a smothered burrito which I normally don't go for it's overdone especially in a lot of states this is the only smothered burrito they do but it's fantastic. They make the best enchilada sauce I've ever had. <laughs> it's a beef and bean burrito. So it's got shredded beef, beans, uh, Spanish rice or Mexican rice or whatever, and lettuce inside. And this sauce and the cheese. And then you mix these two salsas together, the picante and the verde. Drizzle a little bit over if you want some spice. Mmm. Yeah. Um, that's it. So showing off the food because some people like seeing the food. Some people are going to be like, how dare you betray in and out Ash? I I've <laughs> went there three times this week. I've been to a lot of in and out uh, I do like showing off the burgers and it was when I was doing my regular Wednesday videos. It was a cool thing to do, but there you go. Um, so now if you guys are hungry, uh, I'm sorry about that. Go get yourself some good food uh, and tell me in the comments like in your area, what's What's the good eateries? Like what is, do you have something special like in your like a local establishment or just a favorite chain or something that you love getting food? Um, uh, or you know, going out, treating yourself. Uh, let me know, I like to hear about that stuff. Um, Sombrero's is one of my favorites. So into the comics we go. Uh, I went to my special store, which I've bitched about a few times because of the, the owner that works is weird is bad customer service he seemed to lighten up so i'm happy um there's still a lot of quirks in that shop but i go to this store i call it the special store because all graphic novels and trade paperbacks are 30 percent off all the time so always 30 percent off which can make a big difference 30 percent off of a 3.99 comic that's nice if you're buying a lot of comics, but uh, so anyways, I had to pick up Destroy All Monsters, and this is a $24.95 book, and uh, you know, it's not cheap, but it's absolutely worth it. Uh, it is thick. It's about six comics worth of book in here. So if you take six times four, that's $24. You're getting six floppies, but it's hardcover, $24.95, that's MSRP. I paid like 17 something at this shop, so uh, you can even find cheaper online if you really wanna go that route, but you gotta wait. So, so anyways, this is fantastic. We're doing a show tonight on the Criminal Cast, which is 
every last Wednesday of the month now featuring my boy Skip uh, at Skip and Tosh and also uh, Eric Breen. And we're going to be talking about this book, geeking out about it, not really reviewing it, just being total fan geeks because um, we love these books. Spoiler alert, I have read this book, uh, even though it's in a shrink wrap <laughs> still. Um, I have a digital copy that I that I read. Uh, and the show will be tonight. I don't know if I'll have this uploaded in time before. <laughs> so you might be like, wait, that show was already passed. But there we go. So Destroy All Monsters, the third reckless book. It's a series of books. Uh, they do have a chronological order, but the stories are not continuing narrative. So you don't have to necessarily read them in order. Like you could just pick this book up and read it if you want. I do. I would recommend still starting at the first one, which is just called Reckless. Um, they are doing, they've announced two more. So the next one will be out in April. <clears throat> it's a great series to connect. Come join us for the show tonight. See what the book's all about if you don't already know. And if you do know, then why are you missing the show? Also, when I was at that store, they had this book, uh, The Black Dragon. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm fighting out of, I got a cough. So hold on. I don't have a mute. Oh, I guess I do have a mute, but it's the shoddy production val values just added to the charm. <laughs> At least I keep telling myself that. So this is Black Dragon. This is by Chris Claremont, one of my all-time favorites, and John Bolton, one of the best artists in comics history. I love John Bolton. He is the artist of my avatar that I do for Ashon Comics, the reason I picked that. He also did the art for that comic originally, the original Army of Darkness comic. Anyways, John Bolton, he does a cover here. And I've always been curious about this book because of these people, but I just, it's only in, it's an original graphic novel. And I was at my, that shop today and he was selling these for three bucks. It's, I was like, are you, are you okay? There's no excuse now. So three bucks and uh, it's all pencil line art. So it's not painted like is what I'm used to, but um, it's a, an Arthurian type tale as, as much as I know. I don't know very much of this. And so I'm very excited. Uh, three, $3 for this. And they had more. So if you live in the San Diego area and you, he had, he had probably a 12 of these. So he's definitely offloading. I'm stoked. This has got to be at the very least decent. <laughs> so three bucks, less than the price of a comic. I got a massive thick 200 page graphic novel. All right, going on to my pool t today. I went to the shop. We'll start off with the Marvels and the DCs. Daredevil 35, wrapping it up. One more issue until Marvel cancels this series, like the jerks they are, because they need to milk you and exploit your fandom for more, more number ones. I'm very pissed off about that. The book is great. This is the series I've been calling for since I've been reading in the beginning, this is the best series at Marvel. Hands down, this is the best ongoing series at Marvel. Uh, people tell you about the prison part and uh, don't listen to them. The, the, I hear a lot of BS behind that. The, the people clearly aren't reading the book and are making assumptions about it and then saying it's stupid based on those assumptions. Um, it's an interesting story about Matt Murdock being Daredevil in prison. Uh, you do see Elektra, she's running around calling herself Daredevil. It's not exactly executed the way other books would do it. She's not trying to replace Daredevil. She's trying to just basically fill in while he's in prison and also prove to him that she can be a hero. Like she, cause Daredevil is like, I can't work with you. You're a murderer, like go away. And she's like, I can be like you. I can, I can fight and not murder people. And it's an interesting story for her because that's the, her conflict. She's constantly trying to like, ah, how does Matt do this? <laughs> you know? Um, and then she's fighting bullseye. It's an interesting story, but she's only in about 25% of the story. Every issue has a little bit of her, but 75% of the books are about Matt. So it's not about, we shuffled Matt off and replaced him with a woman. Like we're used to. Chip Zdarsky has really respected, uh, this concept and still, I, I don't have any bad things to say about Daredevil, really, it, other than the main artist, Chetto, is not on the book because they keep taking him off, to, either because he's slow, I don't know. But in this case, I know what it is because they're doing a big event after issue 36, the Reign of Devils or whatever it's called. 
and it's chips it's gonna continue where this book leaves off it's a big event and they did the same bullshit at venom remember with absolute carnage and then black rain sorry not black rain king of black um where they they took off um what's his boy uh, ryan stegman off of the venom and replace him as the artist so that he could go do those events and so venom fans had to suffer so that the events and it's just annoying and this is gonna have to cancel and i bet you i'll bet you just like absolute um carnage just like that series i'll bet you this upcoming reign of devil thing whatever it's called could have just been a daredevil story it could have fit in this book absolute carnage should have been a venom story it should have just been in you know and they could have still had spin-offs and tied other books into that but they wanted to make it a standalone event to get sell more number ones and that's really annoying i don't know if there's going to be another daredevil book after this if they're going to like oh now the event's over so now we're relaunching daredevil hooray more number ones i get really annoyed um this legacy numbering should be the actual numbering yeah 647 look at that this is daredevil 647 they're going to cancel it at 648. They're not even going to get to 650. It's annoying. At least DC is like realized, screw this. We're just going to jump our numbers back up to what they should be. Enough ranting. The book is solid for 35 issues. It has been solid. I have not had regrets about the book until this cancellation, which is pure uh, obnoxious uh, gimmickry. So uh, that's all in Marvel and DC. Moving on to independence. Oblivion Song. This is another uh, bitter pill to swallow. This is a fantastic book. I've been praising this book since the beginning. I've been collecting it since number one. As you can see, it's also on number 34. And um, it's coming to an end as well. There's like three more issues. And I'm really sad. This is one of the best indies. This is one of the best books, period, on the shelves. It's fantastic. It's by Robert Kirkman of Walking Dead fame. Uh, Lorenzo De Felici does the art. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but it is a very creative alien. I don't want to say alien invasion, but you got to read it for yourself. The reason I don't actually talk about this book or do anything on this book for his videos, you can't. You spoil everything. This is a heavily plot driven book where every issue is like new reveal. And if I talk about it, it just I don't, it reveals some big spoilers. So that's the fun of reading this book. And it's great. It's been a awesome ride getting it monthly and stretching this experience out you can absolutely go binge this you can go buy this in the trades and read it and uh, it'll be fun but you'll blast through it and and all those great reveals will happen like every 15 minutes as you're reading and instead of over the course of two years two plus years so i really enjoyed getting this book i was really hoping it would go at least twice as long you know, Walking Dead went 193 issues. Invincible, I think 144 issues. Could this, this could have easily gone to 100. Um, it's weird that Outcast, which I never heard about, reached 48 issues. So I'm a little bummed. If, if you hear any bitterness, it's nothing to do with the quality of this book. I love this book. I'm so frustrated to see it go going. Um, anyways, but great book, 100%. Go check out the trades. Um, and also, continuing on, one of the best books in comics for 35 plus years, uh, Usagi Ojimbo, it's always Stan Sakai, written and illustrated by Stan Sakai, story of a masterless samurai rabbit who lives sort of in shame because he let his master die, so now he wanders as a ronin, and he constantly has adventures throughout feudal Japan uh, as this ronin, and it's, it's, a, it's a book about adventures. Most of the storytelling is parable style. So it's like one or two issues. It's not like ongoing arcs. Sometimes every once in a while they will do an arc, but a lot of it's just, you know, you could pick up a tale and read it and it's, it's so charming. It looks cutesy like this. Uh, and, and in some ways it is, but the stories are adult level. Like they're serious stories, um, but they're done in a family friendly way. So it's a great story that adults, I love, you know, and, but you could share with your children. It's fantastic. Um, I, I can't recommend Usagi enough. It's, um, and it, especially if you like samurai culture, which I, I love, feudal Japan, um, you'll learn a lot. It's very educational, but it's not in a teachy way, if that makes sense. Anyways, 
I always talk about this book. It's 23. This is the ongoing series. Uh, IDW does have a second Usagi Ojimbo series and it's usually a subtitle. And what those are are reprint books from old fanographic days. So like 30, 30 plus years ago. And they're colored because Usagi was always black and white up until this. So I'm not picking up those reprints because I have them. <laughs> um, I got the first series and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm buying them just for the colors. What I'm thinking of doing actually is getting them collected because the rep I'll have the trades and I'll have them colored. So I was like, that's just a better way to go instead of buying the floppies over again. But this series I do get because it's original. Um, there is a legacy numbering for it inside the book. It'll tell you uh, because Usagi has gone through many different publishers. So it's not like a, what I just bitched about with Marvel. It's had to reboot at number one because it was a fan of graphics and it went to Dark Horse. Then it went to Image. I think it went back to Dark Horse for a while. Now it's at IDW. So, but if they, if, in the book, you can see what the actual, it's like in the 200 and somethings. So that's interesting. Great book. I love it. It's just, there you go. Uh, next is Echo Lands. This one was, um, I got onto this book from Skip. He mentioned it. We, we talk about books occasionally to feature on our show. And he was like, oh, yeah, Echo, Echo Land's number one. Da, da, da. I was like, I don't know anything about it. And he started telling me. He's like, that sounds interesting. And then he told me about how it's told in landscape format. So the book is like this. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And now every landscape book I've ever read flips up this way, like a calendar. And I hate that. I hate reading my book sideways. But Echo Land's, I come to find out, the spine is here. This is where the staples are. On the, so it opens up like wide and it's massive panoramic view. And um, the pages, it's not like page one, page two. It opens up to one massive full page every time. It really utilizes that space. The art is what you see on the cover. That is the exact quality and style. That is the same art you will get inside the book as well fantastic the writing is not that strong um but don't confuse that with being bad when i say it's not that strong it's just very light at least it seems that way so far i've only read two issues this is issue three it's not like it's a bad story it's not like it's terrible like i'm like oh it's pain it's not it's just not a lot happening this is a book you get for the art experience um and the story is just fine enough to sell you. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm liking this book. I'm going to see where it goes. I'm going to see through the first arc. And then last but not least, I had to pick this up um, because of all the hype and everything. Uh, if those of you may have heard about a little indie book called Something is Killing the Children, <laughs> um, which some people are calling the next Walking Dead as in terms of like su success in the indies. Uh, number one, I think, goes for like 500 bucks and it's only in the 20s it's the hotness on that book has soared so there's a spin-off book that just got released today called house of slaughter and they have a foil variant which i picked up this is the cover but foil looked really cool and i was like well if i'm gonna pick up the number one i'll get the foil so i'm gonna give this a try i still have not read something is killing the children uh, um but I was like, I might as well pick this up. Now, I do not expect this book is going to do, as far as speculator thing, it's not going to be 500 bucks in a couple years. Because the, 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 the number of copies that were ordered by stores, they weren't sleeping on this one. Something is killing children. No one knew who that book was. Stores didn't order it. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, this book's really good. And everyone wants it, number one. It gets optioned. And, you know, you know how it goes. But still... I don't want to, if, if this is something that I want later, see, like I'm, with something that's killing the children, I would kind of like to collect that book, but I, I, it's beyond reach now because I can't get the number one. I just can't pay 500 bucks for a number one, right? It's, it's, it'd be one thing if it was like number one was 20 bucks. Oh, okay, but no. But this, if I later on go, man, I wish I was collecting House of Slaughter. Well, I got the number one in, in the bag. I don't have to worry about it. Um, and you know, if, if I hate it, maybe someone will want it. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a try. It's a number one. So there you go. You can tell me what you think, uh, what looks the most interesting to you. It's not much. Uh, don't forget these bad boys too. 
Um, that is a compo call, Ash style, 20 minutes, like a blink of an eye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget, um, probably not gonna have this uploaded in time, but watch our, the show Criminal Cast every last Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific. And uh, you can watch it on a replay if you don't catch it live, it's podcast style. See you there. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.